Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at linear approximations and differentials. So we're going to look at how to understand and evaluate increments and differentials and what's the difference between the two, how to determine linear approximation or tangent line approximation of a function at an input value. So we're going to start with linear approximations. So we have already seen that a curve that lies very close to its tangent line near a point looks like a straight line. So if you look at the graph and you zoom in at x equals a, it's going to look like the graph y equals f of x is going to look like the tangent line. So if you zoom in towards the point of tangency, your graph will look more and more like a tangent line at that point. So this observation is the method behind approximating values of functions using a process called linearization. So the idea works like this. It's very easy, but sometimes difficult to calculate a value f of a. So it's difficult or even impossible to calculate nearby values. It might be easy to calculate f of a but it might be impossible or difficult to evaluate values of x that are really close. So the idea is, what if you take the tangent line to approximate the graph? So we're going to find a value of the linear function L, and it's called L because it's a linearization or a line, where the graph of the tangent line of f of x at x equals a can be found very easily. So find a tangent line at x equals a, so at the point a comma f of a, that can serve as an approximation to the curve y equals f of x when x is close to a. So let's review how to find the equation of the tangent line. So the equation of the tangent line, we can use point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. Now, in terms of the context of linearization or linear approximation for the tangent with using the tangent line, the y1 is f of a. The slope is slope of the tangent line, so f prime of a times x minus x1 is a. So if you solve this equation for y, you get the equation of the tangent line, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So this is the equation of the tangent line at x equals a. So we're going to use this equation of the tangent line as an approximation to the function when the x values are close to a value a. All right, so we're going to take the function and approximate it using the equation of the tangent line at x equals a. All right, so when we do that, the approximation is called a linear approximation because we are approximating the function using a linear function which is the tangent line approximation of the function at x equals a. So this linear function you can denote using L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And this is called the linearization of the function at x equals a. So before we get any further, we're going to do the first example of just practicing finding a linear approximation or linearization of a function at a particular x value. So number one, we're going to find the linearization for x to the fourth plus 4x to the second at a equals negative one. So this function is a quartic function. We're going to approximate the function using a tangent line at x equals negative one, or a equals negative one. To find the linearization, we need to calculate the derivative of the function. 
So 4x cubed plus 8x. We need the slope of the tangent line, so evaluate f prime at negative 1. And you'll find that the slope of the tangent line is negative 12. And then we also need the y value at x equals negative 1. So substitute negative 1 back into the original function to find out the y value at negative 1 is 5. So this is everything that we need to calculate the linearization. So L of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So the linearization would be 5 plus negative 12 times x subtract negative 1, which we'll simplify to 5 minus 12x subtract 12. So the linearization would be negative 12x subtract 7. Keep in mind that this linearization is for this particular function f of x and also for this value of a. So if either one of them change, then so will the linearization. So we can approximate the function using this linearization or linear approximation when a is negative 1. All right, let's try a different problem, different function. This time g of x is going to be the cosine function, cosine of x, and the value of a is pi divided by 2. All right, so it's going to be the exact same steps as the problem before. We need to find the derivative, which is negative sine of x. Evaluate the derivative at pi over 2 to calculate the slope of the tangent line, which this will be negative 1. And we also need the y value for the original function at pi over 2. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Alright, so this time the linearization or linear approximation would be g of a plus g prime of a times x minus a, which would be 0 plus negative 1 times x subtract pi over 2, which will be negative x and then plus pi divided by 2. So this is a linearization for the function g of x, which is cosine of x, when a equals pi over 2. Okay, so this gives you an idea of how to calculate the linearization or linear approximation for a function at a particular value of x. In example 2, we're going to find the linearization of a function, again, for the function f of x equals square root of x plus 3 at a equals 1, but this time we're actually going to use the linearization to approximate the values square root 3.98 and then also square root 4.05, and then find out if the approximations are underestimates or overestimates. So let's start with the linearization just like before. So let's rewrite f of x as the square root of x plus 3 is x plus 3 to the half. And now calculate the derivative using the power rule and chain rule. So 1 half times x plus 3 all to the negative half times 1. And then rewrite the function to be 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x plus 3. That's the derivative. Now we need to evaluate the derivative at a equals 1. So 1 divided by 2 times the square root of 1 plus 3, which will be 1 fourth. So that's the slope of the tangent line. We also need f of 1, which is square root 1 plus 3, which is 2. Okay, so now we can calculate the linearization of f of x 
at a equals 1. It's L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x subtract a. Alright, so that means f of a is 2 plus the derivative evaluated at a equals 1, which is 1 fourth, times x subtract 1. So when you simplify, the linearization will be 1 fourth x plus 7 fourths. So there's a linearization. So we can approximate the function using this linear approximation or tangent line approximation when a is equal to 1. So we can use this approximation for x values that are really close to um, 1 to approximate using this linearization. Alright, so therefore the linear approximation is square root x plus 3 can be approximated using this linear approximation. It's approximately 1 fourth x plus 7 fourths where x is near 1. Okay, so now let's move on to the square root 3.98. Notice that the x value would be 0.98 because you can rewrite this as 0.98 plus 3. So this is approximately, using the linearization, 1 fourth times 0 0.98 plus 7 fourths, which this is approximately 1.995. So in other words, the square root of 3.98 is approximately 1.995 using the linearization that we found. Alright, so let's calculate the square root of 4.05. Notice that the x value is 1.05, which means the approximation would be 1 fourth times 1.05 plus 7 fourths, which is approximately 2.0125. Okay, so what this means is that we have an approximations for the square root of 3.98 and the square root of 4.05. Using the approximations, whenever x is close to 1, so 0 0.98, that's close to 1, 1 1.05, that's pretty close to 1 as well. So these approximations are going to be fairly accurate. So now, to answer the last part, are these approximations overestimates or underestimates? The tangent line which is L of x, is above the curve. Y equals F of x. So the estimates are overestimates. Now, the reason why they're overestimates is because the approximation, the linear approximation, is using the tangent line. So if the tangent line is above the curve, then those y values will be greater than the actual y values. So the estimates that we came up with will be overestimates for the square root of 3.98 and the square root of 4.05. Okay, so let's look at a table and a graph of how do these estimates actually compare to the actual true values. So we're going to compare the estimates from the linear approximation from the previous example in terms of the true values. So we just stated that the tangent line is above the curve. So we can see that with the graph. So when x is equal to 1, you can zoom in as close as you want to x equals 1, and it's going to look like the curve is going to look very similar to the tangent line. So as long as you're close to x equals 1, the tangent line can approximate the function's value. So let's look at the square root of 3.9. That would be when x equals 0 0.9, because x, the, square, the function is squared x plus 3. The linear approximation using 1 fourth x plus 7 fourths gives you 1.975.
and the actual value of square root of 3.9 is 1.9748. So that's extremely close because x is really close to 1. The one we did was square root of 3.98. Square root of 4, that's when x is exactly 1. The linearization gives you 2, and the actual value of square root of 4 is 2. So those will be identical. But notice the further away that you get from x equals 1, let's say we do square root of 6. We can use square root, the linearization to approximate square root of 6. Well, that's when x equals 3. So that's a little bit further away from x equals 1. The linearization gives us 2.5 when you plug 3 in. But the actual value of square root of 6 is about 2.449. So notice that the tangent line approximation is relatively good when x is really close to 1 in the table and the graph, but the approximation deteriorates, the accuracy deteriorates, when x is further away from 1. And you can see that with the graph. If you're further away from x equals 1, the tangent line's not a good predictor or an estimate for the graph because the tangent line will get further and further away from the curve. Okay, so then we're going to look at differentials to finish up the section. The idea behind linear approximations are sometimes formulated in the terminology of what's called differentials. So there's a close relationship between linear approximations and differentials, and here's the connection. Let's say your function is differentiable, so no sharp corners, no cusp, no corners, no vertical tangent lines. We have what's called the differential dx. It is, an, it is an independent variable. So in other words, dx can be any value of a real number. The differential dy, so just dy, is defined in terms of dx. So dx is like the input variable, and dy is treated like an output variable, or dependent variable. So dy is equal to f prime of x, times dx. So that is the formula to calculate dy. You input dx, you input a value of x into the derivative of the function, and you output dy. So dy is the dependent variable. So it depends on x and dx. So if you know dx and you know x, then you can calculate dy as long as the x is in the domain of the function. So this has a geometric interpretation, which is given here. So if you have a point P that's on the curve, so this is at x comma f of x at point P, and you have a point Q at x plus delta x, so here's Q, it is at x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. These are two points on your curve. And we're going to let the change in the x values be delta x and as well as the input for dx. So in this case, dx is equal to delta x. We're going to calculate what is the corresponding change in the y values. So the corresponding change in the y is denoted delta y instead of delta x, so delta y, and it's calculated as dy is approximately f of x plus delta x subtract f of x. So delta y is the change in the y values. It is using the two points on the curve, so point q and point p. Well, this distance between the y values, between q and p, is called delta y. And you might notice that this is the numerator of the difference quotient. Now, you might be wondering, how is this connected with the differential dy? And here's how. Notice that the slope of the tangent line and the tangent line is the line PR. So up in the graph, this line P to R 
is the tangent line. It has a slope that is denoted f prime of x. And we know that. The derivative tells us the slope of the tangent line at any x value on the graph. Well, if you want to calculate what is the distance between r and this point p. So r has the same x value, x plus delta x, but the y value for r is calculated using the tangent line. So at x plus delta x, you can plug that in or substitute that into the derivative to find out where is that point on the tangent line. The distance between this point r and the distance between the y value for p, this is called the differential dy. And it's given by this formula. You can calculate it by taking the derivative of the function at x. So you find out the slope of the tangent line at p, the point p. You multiply by the increment or the differential dx, because we are saying they're the same, dx is delta x, and you get the corresponding change between r and p in terms of the y values, and that's dy. So the differential dy represents the amount that the tangent line rises or falls, whereas delta y, so looking at, back up at the graph, delta y represented the change between the point q and point p and those two points were on the curve so delta y represents the amount that the curve rises or falls not the tangent line as x increases from x to delta x so they're not exactly the same not dy and delta y are not exactly the same but the closer you are to this point p then dy and delta y will be very close. So as long as you're really close to x, just like with linear approximations, if you're really close to this value of x, then the dy, the change in the point between your tangent line and the curve, will be very small, and that's also be, that's going to be very small for the delta y. So delta y and dy are going to be very close to one another as long as delta x becomes really small. So let's see how this can be used with example three. Let's say you have the radius of a sphere is measured to be 20 centimeters. And you have a possible error in the measurement at most two hundredths, so 0 0.02 centimeters. And it's asking what is the maximum error in the value of the radius when you compute the volume of a sphere? Okay, so we need the volume of a sphere, which is the formula V equals 4 thirds pi times radius cubed. Okay, so then the error in the measured value of R is delta r, 0 0.02. And we are going to call this dr, just like delta x was equal to dx earlier. Then, the corresponding error in the volume is dv the differential dv. Okay, so let's use the formula for volume of a sphere and we're going to calculate the derivative. So dv dr, r is the variable and v is the function's name. The derivative would be 4 thirds pi times 3r squared, which will simplify to 4 pi r squared. Okay, so now we can calculate the differential dv as f prime of x times dx. 
So now let's replace what these mean. dv, the derivative is the derivative of the function. So it's v prime, where r is the variable, so v prime of r, times dx, we don't have an x, so it's dr. This becomes 4 pi r squared times dr. So that is a formula to calculate the differential dv, 4 pi r squared times dr. So let's go back. When r equals 20 centimeters and the error in the radius was 0 0.02 centimeters, then we can calculate dv. dv is 4 times pi times 20 centimeters squared times 0 0.02, which is approximately 100 0.531. And now this is the change in the volume, the differential for volume. So this is measured in cubic centimeters. So that is the maximum error. The maximum error in the calculated volume is about 100.531 cubic centimeters. Okay, so this might seem an extremely large value for the error, but the possible error in the previous example, it may appear to be large, it does, but we have to put this in context. What is, what's the relative error in the calculation. So we're going to calculate relative error as dividing the error by the total volume. Okay, so delta V divided by V. So it's the change in the volume divided by volume, which we are using as approximately the differential of volume divided by V, the, the, the true volume, which gives us 4 pi r squared dr, that's the differential dv, and the true volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. If you simplify, it comes out to be 3 times dr divided by r. So what does this tell us? The relative error in the volume, so that's dv divided by v is the relative error of volume, It is three times the relative error of the radius. So going back to the previous example, the relative error in the radius would be calculated uh, approximately as dr divided by r. dr was the error in the measurement, 0 0.02 centimeters divided by the true radius, which was 20 centimeters, that would give us approximately 0 0.001 for the relative error in the radius. It's always easier to interpret error in terms of percentages. So if the radius has a percent error, 0.1% in the radius, then Keep in mind that the volume, the relative error in the volume, is three times the amount of the relative error of the radius. So percent error for radius, 0.1%. The volume would have a relative error of 0.3%, or 0 0.03. So even though it's a relatively large error, 100.531 cubic centimeters, it's only off by 0.3% from the true volume. So this finished up our video on linearization and linear approximations using the tangent line and also differentials. If you have any questions about any of the examples that we talked about, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video.